Hello, everybody. Welcome to my brief comparison of consumer and producer theory. Uh, yeah, I have a lot of students who seem to have a hard time figuring out which one's which. And I think it's because they're pretty much the same thing. I mean, we really we relabel everything, but the math we use is similar. So let me give you a brief idea. Our consumers, they need to maximize their utility function, which is some function of x and y. Most of the time it's increasing in both, and it has diminishing marginal returns. Uh, our producers, they have a function that's very similar, which is a production function, f of lk. They input labor and capital, and it gives them stuff. Uh, in both cases, you input goods, x, y, lk, and you get something out, utility or product. And so our consumers, they're trying to get as much utility as they can within a budget constraint. And our producers are trying to minimize their cost at every quantity. And that's fine. So let's see, we've drawn a few graphs before. If we have good Y up here, good X down here, uh, we can have a budget constraint, which gives you every linear combination of the goods that are within your affordability. And we can do this, I missed. Uh, we can do this indifference curve. There we go. And we're looking for the point where they just barely touch each other. Uh, if we chose any other point on the budget constraint, such as one like either of these, we would spend all of our money, but we'd be at a lower level of utility because we'd be at a lower indifference curve. And we can't spend anything along this one because it's unaffordable. It's not within the budget constraint. This point here gives us the highest utility we can reach while staying within our means. Uh, so a very similar picture in our producer theory. Two goods, labor and capital. Uh, there's a cost of production. It just depends on how much labor and capital you do. We're going to call this the ISO cost function. Everything along that line costs the firm the same amount. And we have an ISO... You're going to have to bear with me on the artwork there. ISO quant function. It's almost perfect complements, but let's ignore that for now. ISO quant function which says everything along this point produces the same amount of quantity. Now with utility max, we wanna to get to the highest utility curve we can on our budget constraint. With cost minimization, we wanna to get to the lowest ISO cost function possible at every ISO quant. And so if we look at a couple of different points, we don't wanna be here or here because it produces the same quantity as it, as it does at this point, which is our good one, but it costs more money to do it. This point with the arrow on it produces the same quantity, but has the lowest possible cost. Uh, so there's that, some basic intuition. Now let's look at the pieces. If our utility function is very similar to our production function, let me at the marginal utility of x how fast utility rises with x and the marginal utility of y are very comparable to the marginal product of labor and marginal product of capital. Both show how fast our objective function is increasing as we add more inputs. Because of that, the slopes of these lines, which are based on the marginal rate of substitution from x to y, uh, are very similar to the marginal rate of technical substitution from L to K. This one is equal to MU of X over MUY. This one's equal to MPL over MPK. And then the slopes of the curves are the negatives of those. So slope of the indifference curve is equal to negative MRSXY slope of isoquant curve equal to negative mrtslk. 
If you're starting to think like, well, these look really similar, that's because they do. I mean, heck, even a lot of the time, we'll often use very similar functions for these. I often show my students Cobb Douglas for both because it's just an easy function that has all the properties we want. And so the math that would come from that then would be identical for both. Uh, let's see. Next, we can look at our budget constraint or, or our ISO cost function. One of them looks like, hey, here's your income that you're allotting to these two goods equals price of X times good X plus price of Y times the number of good Y versus cost is equal to the price of labor, which is W or wage times L plus R, the price of capital or rental rate times K, where P of X is equal to W or is similar to W P Y is similar to R, and I is similar to C. And those come out exactly the same. So when we graph them, the slope of the BC graph, the budget constraint graph, is equal to negative PX over PY. The slope of the ISO cost graph is equal to negative W over R. In both situations, if I'm trying to optimize, I want to set those two slopes equal to each other. So I'm going to set negative MRS XY equal to minus PX over PY. Or I'm going to set the slope, oops, sorry. Or I'm going to set negative MRTS LK equal to minus W over R. And when I reduce whatever equations come out of that, I'm going to get some ratio of X's to Y's or some ratio of L to K. And that ratio will have to hold true uh, whether uh, no matter what income level my consumer has or what cost my firm wants to incur. Uh, so this is where I would start. They are both extreme, oops, sorry. They're both extremely similar from the ground up. Now we ask different kinds of questions sometimes because one's about maximizing utility, one's about minimizing costs. Uh, so we sometimes approach these from different directions, but mathematically they are very parallel. So I hope this was helpful to you. If not, too bad. Don't waste any more time. Thanks for watching.